here we go. So what I have is log base 10 of x plus log base 10 of 3x minus 5 equals log base 10 of 2. And one of the most common uh, mistakes that I get with students is they'll just come through and they'll say, oh, you got logarithms, you got an equation, let's just, uh, let's just cancel all these out, right? And then let's just go and solve from there. And that's a great thinking, but we have to remember the, the equality of logarithms only works when we have a logarithm Three. That only works when we have logarithms, one with the same base, but one is equal to another. Right now, I don't have logarithms that are equal to each other. I have, on this side, I have two logarithms, and this, I have one side, one logarithm. So what I need to do is look on this left side. How can I rewrite this logarithm as one single logarithm? Because once I can write it as one single logarithm, I now can apply the equality of um, logarithm. So there's a couple things we can look at right here. If you remember the properties of logarithms, what we had was the product rule. And what the product rule stated was when I have the addition of two logarithms, I can rewrite that as one single logarithm. As long as they have the same base, I can rewrite that as a single logarithm with the exact same base as the product of the two logarithms. So therefore, when I adding two different logarithms with the same base, I can rewrite that as a single logarithm as a product. So now, what I notice is now that I have a logarithm equal to a logarithm with the exact same base, now the logarithms don't matter. What I know that what I'm evaluating for on each logarithm has to equal each other. So therefore, I can just say x times 3x minus 5 is now equal to 2. So now what I need to do is apply my distributive property. And I get 3x squared minus 5x equals 2. And now I have a lovely, lovely quadratic. So in solving quadratics, we need to remember, you know, how do we solve? It's not like a linear, linear equation where we just isolate the variable. Now what we have to do is, you know, look at what are our, for, what are our ways that we look to solve any quadratics. Well, we could use factoring. We could use the quadratic formula. Or we could work on completing the square or even try graphing it. Well, let's go and look at factoring this first. So if I have 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 equals 0. Now, I've done this many different ways, and I've, I've gone through a lot of different examples on how to factor when you have your coefficient at, um, for a is larger than 1. However, I'm just going to kind of work through this a little bit of the guess and check method. So I either have 3x times x equals 0. Those are my only two possibilities I'm going to multiply to give me 3x squared. However, I have a couple of different possibilities to multiply to give me negative 2. It could one be, I could either be, I could have plus or minus 1 times plus or minus 2. Obviously, if one's positive, the other one has to be negative. Or I could have plus or minus 2 times plus or minus 1. All right? And remember, since I'm multiplying to give me negative 2, if one's positive, the other has to be negative. So I'm either multiplying the 3 times a 1 or a 3 times a 2. And then either the x times a 1 or the x times a 2. Well, since I noticed that my middle term is a negative 5, I know that I'm going to have to have my larger number be negative. So therefore, I can multiply 3x times a negative 2. That would give me a negative 6. So if this was negative, then I could do x times, I'd have to do positive 1. So let's double check to see if this works. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times negative 2 is a negative 6x, and then plus x times 1, which is 1x. So this is going to leave me with a negative 5x. 1 times negative 2 leaves me with a negative 2. So therefore, that is going to be my factored form. Now, since I have it factored out equaling the 0, I can apply the 0 product property, which states 3x plus 1 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. Now, solving for x, I subtract 1, divide by 3, and I get x equals a negative 1 third, or adding x to both sides, I get x equals 2. So therefore, in this equation, I'm going to have two values um, for my x that I'm going to want to check out. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve um, for the values of your logarithm. Thanks.